Ireland are excellent. They're the number one team in the world at the moment, currently on a 17-game unbeaten streak, and a win on the weekend would mean they'll equal the record for the longest winning streak by an international side. Faced with an all-black team which doesn't carry the weight that it used to, every little statistic, every trend, all the odds suggest that Ireland will win on the weekend. Except for one teensy, tiny, glaring, shite problem. Ireland have never won a quarterfinal, and unfortunately, this isn't just a freak coincidence or a timing issue. It's a hoodoo. In 2015, Ireland went into the World Cup ranked third in the world. Having just won back-to-back -back six nations, they went unbeaten in the pools but got pumped by ninth-ranked Argentina in the quarters. In 2019, Ireland were number one in the world, and despite losing to a spirited Japan side, they only conceded two tries in the pool stage. So there was still plenty of expectation for them to break the hoodoo against the All Blacks in the quarters. But they got destroyed, walked over, embarrassed. It was so deflating. So now four years later, Ireland find themselves in the same place. Number one in the world, favourites against an All Black side still trying to hit its stride. And yes, I know it's still the All Blacks, but Ireland are one of the only teams that seem to not be intimidated by the aura that comes with them. Since 2018, Ireland have won four from six against the Kiwis. The All Blacks only wins coming last year when Sexton got injured early and that quarterfinal last World Cup. This Irish team is one of the most clinical teams of all time and I intend no exaggeration. They truly embody what it means to be a team. They're not necessarily the most talented athletes, but they each understand their own roles. And to go even further than that, they understand each other's roles. They know exactly what their teammates are doing at all times. It's like a hive mind, like they have eyes on the back of their heads. It's such a perfect representation of trust and cohesion that is just so satisfying to watch. Their attack shape is so dynamic and intricate, finally carving holes in a defensive line before you even realise they're there. They work you down slowly, constantly forcing decision making in the opposition's defence through tip passes, angles and offloads. They're almost impossible to defend with a passive defence. I mean look at how their attack was able to thrive in the series against the Kiwis. When given space, their pass selection and accuracy at the line is genuinely phenomenal. And even if you deploy a successful rush defense to put pressure on that decision making, it doesn't seem to affect them. Like in the game against the box, how they were able to maintain their shape and execute perfect passes against a relentless attacking defense like that is beyond me. Just incredible timing. Everything is so well orchestrated. They also have the best discipline in the world. You don't get any cheap meters off the Irish. You have to go through them. And this isn't just because they don't do stupid shit. Discipline is so much more complex than that. Maintaining good discipline at the international stage is about absorbing pressure effectively so that you can make the correct decisions legally. This Irish team can get bashed into oblivion, but they're tough bastards and will not succumb to any All Black squeeze. The All Blacks, on the other hand, are a bit shaky at the moment. But they'll be confident they can upset the Irish. That's just what they do. Mug you off and spoil the party because they're very good at rugby. Yes, they lost to the French. Yes, they got pumped by the box. But they didn't have who have proved to be their most important players in Geordie Barrett and Shannon Frizzell. Because the reality is the Kiwis have no depth at 12 or 6. Geordie Barrett was an experimental revelation at 12 last year. It was the clarity in the midfield they were missing. The Kiwis need a big crash ball at 12 to be able to secure metres, especially on back football. Think Nonu and Sonny Bill. And even in current teams, Bundy Aki and Dialende. Then there's Frizzell, who to many in New Zealand is the heir to the throne. Long have they searched for a six who could fill the abnormally large shoes of Kano. This is especially important in the current Kiwi setup because since Kane is captain and Sevilla is a freak so has to be on the field somewhere, they stick him at eight. Which leaves six to be the only big body in the back row. And Frizzell seems to be the answer. He's a big body but he's mobile and can keep up with the Kiwi playstyle. He's skilled, he has a great presence at the ruck and most importantly he's very very good in the lineout. The extra jumping option is key to the Kiwi lineout success especially with how skilled Frizzell is in the air. And considering that the Irish have been losing three lineouts a game at this World Cup. I'm sure the Kiwis will be looking to cause even more disruption at set piece. And not just lineouts. Kiwis have a serious scrum now, which has kind of gone under the radar. De Groot and Lomax are fairly young props, but they know what they're doing. Which is why I think one of the key matchups will be in the front row. Will Furlong be able to show the young boys who's boss, or will he be rustled by the desperation of the Kiwis to find any sort of leverage they can against a formidable Irish side? I also think the midfield will be key. Bundy Arke is in the form of his life and just looks massive. Geordie is a terrific player, but will he be able to handle that kind of heat? Then there's Ring Rose and Yuani. Yuani is known for his electric pace and feet, but struggles with the nightmare role that is defending that 13 channel. This will be key because the Irish midfield conjures so much deception and doubt for the opposition to swallow that it becomes so tricky to be in a strong position to make a tackle. If you were to pick a weakness in this Irish team, it would have to be Sexton. And not in the sense that he's a bad player. 
Ireland haven't lost a game in 976 days where he's been available the whole game. But when Ireland play without him, they're far from World Cup favourites. It never ceases to amaze me how much shape they manage to lose when he goes off. It's not even just little things, like their attack looking flat or players getting lost. It seems like the Irish need Johnny on the field to get permission to perform basic skill execution like tackling and catching. That was my judgement from just watching Ireland. Although I compiled some stats from the last two seasons and it kind of proves me wrong. In 2022, the total score for the year was 194 to 84 when Sexton was on the field and 115 to 98 when he wasn't. Now these findings support what my understanding of the Irish setup is from a surface level. However, in 2023, excluding the Romania game, the total score is 191 to 79 when Sexton is on the field and 147 to 77 when he isn't, which is a lot better. Developing from a 17 points difference to a 70 points difference when Sexton is off. This is great news for Ireland because Sexton isn't going to be around for much longer, and if his frail old body gets injured this weekend, Ireland need confidence they can do it without him. It makes sense that they've improved in this area because there's been so much talk in the Irish camp about taking some of the weight off of Johnny's shoulders, ensuring there are ball players and organisers all across the field, and despite it still looking to me as if they need him to tie their shoelaces, the stats suggest otherwise. In the injury department, the Irish will be feeling the loss of James Ryan, and we will soon see what the conditions of Lowe and Hansen are after coming off with injury last week. I imagine the Kiwis will be aware of this and try to target them, especially under that high ball. In terms of the Kiwis, they're without the slippery limbs of Mark Talia, which is a huge loss considering the try-scoring form he's in. But for the most part, we're looking at a full-strength clash in an absolute mammoth of a game, with reputation and legacy on the line for both sides. So if you ask me that question, can Ireland finally win a quarterfinal? I'd say yes. They should. They have to. It needs to be done to prove to the world that this Irish team isn't just a strong side. It's a generational team capable of beating anyone week in, week out. But the Kiwis will not make it easy. This is far from the struggling side they're made out to be. They will come out of the blocks fast, and they'll be desperate, because they hate losing more than anyone. This is set to be a classic, and I can't wait any longer. Man, I love rugby.